I want to welcome everyone today to Las Vegas Market and the Las Vegas Market virtual programming for our April, uh, April 2021 Vegas. Um, we have a wonderful group of designers joining us today and a fabulous media partner with Rue Magazine. Um, Kelly Lamb, the editor in chief, edi editorial director now and co principal. <laughs> Um, is going to moderate the discussion. Uh, for any of you who might be able to join us, we actually have Vegas Market starting this weekend, um, this Sunday, live in person here in Vegas. And um, I'm actually here just getting on site. And so looking forward to seeing everyone here, our exhibitors, uh, the attendees, the retailers, the designers, and seeing product in hand you know, being able to touch it and see what these designers brought on screen in real life. And so um, this is CEU, CEU accredited. So if you need that information, it will be emailed out to those who register through Zoom. If you're viewing from Facebook or YouTube, you can email me at kporter at imcenters.com and I'll get you that information. If you have any questions, you can click the Q&A tab and we'll get to those questions towards the end. And, you know, it's going to be a lively, fun discussion today. So, Kelly, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Kim. Uh, hello, everyone. It's definitely, hopefully this is the last virtual version of this. Normally, we're all gathered at market and maybe there's champagne <laughs> on the table somewhere, but I'm uh, really grateful to be connecting virtually and uh, kind of debuting this show house. As uh, Kim said, I'm Kelly with Rue Magazine. And if you're not familiar with us, we uh, have been around for about 10 years as a digital um, design and lifestyle publication. And a couple weeks ago, we launched in print. So that's a very exciting uh venture and change and kind of going against the grain, but I think that's the right move. You'll, I think you'll find many of the designers we're speaking to today uh, appreciate going against the grain and trying, pushing boundaries. So um, if we could quickly go around and just have everyone introduce themselves and then uh, we'll kind of jump into the house. So I'll just go uh, based on the order my screen is showing. So Linda, if you'd like to start. Okay. Hi, I'm Linda Allen. I'm an interior and a lighting designer. I have a practice in Las Vegas and in Los Angeles, and I focus on creating signature environments for my clients. I also have a line of luxury lighting called Live Anywhere. They're wireless, uh, made to order, high performance, battery operated table lamps that go indoors and outdoors. I told you guys we're going against the grain. We're trying innovative things here. Um, Mikkel, why don't you go next? Sure. I'm Mikkel Welch. Uh, I'm an interior designer and a set designer. Uh, I work on HGTV. I just joined the cast of Trading Spaces and a bunch of other fun uh, shows. Um, I also have a line called the Mikkel Welch Collection that is uh, through Yosemite Home. So if you are at market, please stop by uh, Yosemite and check out my new collection. Thanks, Mikkel. Hi, Angelo. Hey, how are you guys? Uh, my name is Angelo Sermelise, and I'm an interior designer and television host on shows uh, on HGTV and TLC. And I also have a product line under Angelo Home, which is such an obvious, uh, obvious name. But uh, yeah, that's me. Thanks for being with us. Uh, hello again, yeah. Kelly. Kelly and I recently chatted because she is in our premiere issue of Rue. So yeah, it's a shameless hey. plug. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly. Um, so I am Kelly Finley and I run the design firm Joy Street Design, which is based in Oakland, California. And we are actually opening up another office in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we primarily focus on residential and boutique commercial and hospitality projects um, throughout the country. Thanks, Kelly. And last but definitely not least, hi, Veronica. Hi there. I'm Veronica Solomon. I'm an interior designer and interior design business mentor. My company is Casa Velora Interiors. 
Elora is my middle name, in case you wonder. <laughs> and um, we're focused mainly on residential, but we do some small commercial projects as well. And the focus for my company is really to um, meet my clients where they are in their pursuit of a beautiful home. And so luxury for me is um, whatever my clients want luxury to be. And so that's what we bring to the table with our projects. That's great. Well, I'm glad everyone's here and I'm um, excited to kind of reveal the spaces you've all designed virtually. Um, and for those who are in market or going to be attending market, please take notes so you can see everything in person. Uh, but why don't we, Kim, if we could kick off the tour. This is really very much my wheelhouse, just digital home tours. <laughs> so I'm very <laughs> comfortable in this format. Uh, so I think that um, the first room in the show house is the family room, which is Mikkel. And I'm going to just adjust my screen so that I can see you, Mikkel. <laughs> but I, you know, before we talk about the space, which I, for anyone who follows Mikkel, you can tell immediately this is his aesthetic and his vibe. And so I think that is one of the most fun things about doing a show house in this format is you can really connect and identify with designers and their different styles. Um, first, Mikkel, I'd like to know just a little bit more about your background and how you discovered your love of design and Take us back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah, so I have a funny story. Um, I am a self-taught designer, and I'll give you the short version of that story. Um, I graduated from Morehouse College in Atlanta with a degree in marketing. And after college, I just really struggled. Like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I went to college because that's what you're supposed to do. And I had a candid conversation with my mother who told me to find my passion and that I would know what it is because it would be something I'd be willing to do for free. And that conversation honestly turned into me working at a furniture store. I had an Oprah aha moment one day on my lunch break, had spent 40 minutes in a store, only had 45 minutes. And again, that just kind of like spiraled and it turned into my love for design. And I started working for uh, an interior designer shortly after. So that was kind of my start. Um, and then in terms of television, I got uh, introduced into the world of TV um, as a contestant on HGTV Design Star, like a first rendition. And after that, things just kind of like sped up. Just hit, hit the gas on it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and what is your approach to design, would you say? Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, as a self-taught designer, I think my approach is just a little bit different um, in the sense that I try to come from, I like to call like a common sense approach. Um, I also like to bring in my set design background where I'm always looking for a wow moment. And I think all designers do that. But for me as a set designer, I was always taught like you have a quick second and Angelo knows this as well, working on television, you have a quick second to make an impact and for someone to like fall in love with the space. And so I always try to find that one piece quickly in a room where I can just really make it shine and make people fall in love with that space. And so I try to translate that into, you know, when I'm designing with clients every day. What, well, let's shift to your design for this room. What would you say that one piece or that one draw you're right. hoping with this? This is going to sound like a, a shameless plug, but it would <laughs> yeah. have to be. You know that that's, I will do many more for myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, my, no, seriously, I love my Riley cabinet. That's the cabinet that you see on the far right, uh, right side of the screen. And for Gorgeous. me, this is a standout piece because I created, because I had never seen anything where, you know, it was like a, an arc shape in the middle of the piece. And so for me, it has braided handles, which you can't see. But in person, that piece is just like a piece of artwork. And so that was like the first thing I had to put in the space. And I promised Kim, it wasn't just because it was my line. I, I like really love the piece. <laughs> well, you should, if, I mean, if you're putting your name on it, you should really love it. <laughs> Absolutely, you 100% love it. <laughs> and I think one of the things that I have really admired from an editorial perspective is your approach to styling. So accessories here are, um, I mean, there there are a lot of beautiful accessories. So could we kind of walk, walk through <laughs> the room yeah, as absolutely. we would in real life and give yeah. us kind of a tour of the special touches? Sure. So I'll just kind of start from left to right. So I have a, um, so as you can see, like um, the tagline, it looks like number three. Three, actually, no, I don't want to start with number three. I want to start 
with number 12, which I think is, well, I'm going to tell you where it's from. Um, the console table is, was like my starting point. And so I wanted to find some accessories that kind of speak to my primitive modern aesthetic. And so I'm someone who loves things like, I always say like, think of Fred Flintstone, drop him in 2021 and what would Fred do? So he's gonna give you, you know, some things that have some patina, something that has a little bit of character. And so what you're looking at um, is a beautiful vase uh, that I found over at Uma Decor. It has some like a blue green kind of essence to it. But then, and that piece is kind of modern, right? But then to the right of that, you have this like weathered vessel from Uma Decor that looks like it was fished up, you know, out, out of, you know, some uh, village. And then next to that, you can kind of see like I have another wooden bowl and I love beads. I feel like wooden beads are like my thing. I will layer them on top of a, a coffee table book, I will put them anywhere that I can. And so right, what I'm really trying to do there is just trying to tell like this travel collected story. And then of course the artwork um, that's behind it, um, that came from Seldon. I'm a huge fan of their artwork just because they have great uh, neutral abstract uh, or landscapes, I should say. And that was kind of like the framework for that piece. Then obviously as you begin to kind of like work over into the main uh, living area. I'm someone who works in neutrals and I feel like because I work in neutrals, I have to have lots of texture. If I don't, the room will look like 50 shades of beige. And so I'm always trying to find ways that like find pillows that have like some type of tassel or you know something that's beaded or woven. And so I have like a collection of pillows um, that all came from Laloy um, and then I'm looking at my coffee table. So funny, I designed this room so long ago. I'm like, why did I choose that? <laughs> um, I, <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of pottery pieces and just like those old weather pottery pieces. And again, uh, as you can see, Umba Decor was kind of like my place. Um, there as well as uh, Noir. Um, I have just like a beautiful vessel on top of the table and then I'm in love with chain links. Anytime you can give me a wooden chain link, I'm all about it. And again, I'm, when I try to tell the story, um, I, I play around until it feels right. A lot of people don't know this, but I work for Emily Henderson, um, the designer, like when she had just won HGTV and I learned a lot from her. And the biggest thing that I learned was when you're styling, if it's not, I don't want to use a curse word, but if it's not a heck yes, then it's a no. And I, and I learned that from her. So if you don't really love it, don't put it in space. And that's honestly how I kind of, um, you know, design the, well, I accessorize the space in that manner. Yeah. You mentioned um, kind of a nice lead in to one of the questions. Uh, what is, with, with the table you're saying, why did I, I can't remember why I chose that, but are there sure. um, any elements either in your own style or just in the industry as a whole that you are ready to be done with, whether it's, you know, in relation to kind of this last year at home or just your style evolving in general? Oh, absolutely. I'm tired of word art. I don't want to see another piece of artwork that has any words or of inspiration. It's like, honey, write it in a notebook. Like, please get that <laughs> off the wall. We don't need signs that say kitchen. We know it's the kitchen. So I'm hoping that uh, the word walls will kind of like, come to an end. Um, I think that's just like my biggest gripe that I have right now. Everything else for the most part, I don't want to make too many enemies on this uh, Zoom call. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at word art, Kelly, because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> you, I don't think we've done um, a panel together before. I always, there's always like a few baited, <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> trying to get people to make enemies, <laughs> but I like, it's, you know, it's interesting to hear people's true feelings and thoughts and opinions uh for okay so let's move into um your own home what are like what is a must-have when it comes to uh and then we'll move to the next room but a must-have in your own home uh versus designing for a client mm, a must-have for Mikhail would have to be Well, can I talk about my favorite piece I love in that regard? Or you just mean in general? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. I have a vintage Chinese coconut fiber raincoat. That is the one piece that will be in every single one of my homes. It's like, I always say, like, if my house were to catch on fire, 
that would be the one piece that I would take. I don't care if I'm naked, like that coat is coming with me. And so that would be the piece that I would say has to come with me. It's like, it's, it's literally like a statement piece. And I scoured the world and finally found it on eBay of all places. But I found it, I love it, and it's not going anywhere. I think I'm going to have to put that in my wheel to have it buried with me. <laughs> Just draped, drape the top. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much. I think we can move move along on our tour uh, to the dining room, one of just my favorite rooms. I just finished lunch. I love a dining room. <laughs> Veronica, uh, well, first, let's talk a little bit about you and your history, um, with your career history, your career path that has brought you to where you are. Oh, my. Okay. So I started in, in this business in back in 2007. But before that, uh, I grew up in Jamaica. I moved here when I was 24 years old and um, had no idea what interior design was. <laughs> and of course, started watching TV and starting getting familiar with interior design and realizing that, oh my goodness, I'm, there's a connection here. I actually like what I'm seeing. So I went back to school and um, dropped out of school and ended up teaching myself interior design. But there was just something that was always calling me into this world of interior design. And so um, I eventually launched my own business because nobody was hiring me. It was right at recession. And so I decided to just go launch a business. And I just started, my, my style evolved from there. I used to, um, my, my style is really about what my clients want. But of course, there's some signature in there. You know, I love color. I love patterns. I love texture. And so you'll see a lot of that in my designs. But really, it was a, it was a long road <laughs> to, inter to, to, to being where I am today. But um, yeah, I just enjoy just being a designer. And you're, you're based in Texas, right? I am, yes, in Katy, Texas, near Houston. Katy, okay. And do you, do you feel like Texas uh, has influenced your, your style at all? Or what are your biggest influences or inspirations? In some ways, it, um, you know, the scenery here, it's beautiful here. We have great landscapes and Houston itself is really happening. You find, you know, a lot of um, cultures that you can pull inspiration from and of course my own culture from Jamaica I pull a lot of inspiration from that that's where you see all the color and the pattern play and so um, but you know where where I live now we will find a lot of the um, <laughs> Joanna Gaines look and the <laughs> you know a lot of people are still asking for that my clients typically don't ask me for that but we're seeing we're still seeing a lot of that but um, I'd, I'd say that it's mostly the culture that, that's around me that I pull my inspiration from. Yeah, well, I would I would not describe this dining room as modern farmhouse at all. <laughs> so um, let's let's talk about some of the pieces. Was how how did you approach the design to this space? Was there an item that kicked it off, or did you kind of have a vision from the start? So I wanted to go for something super feminine, and uh, when I found that rug, uh, it was a jumping off point for me to kind of build from there. Um, and then I found the artwork. And so, yes, I just started building from the, the color scheme and the rug. And I wanted to, um, of course, um, you know, I didn't put a lot of accessories in here, but, you know, accessories would, would obviously do more if we we're doing an actual room. But a light fixture was also something that I was so inspired by because it's, it's just this big, it's, it's huge, but yet it still stayed quiet and allowed the color to speak. And so I just wanted yeah. to go for something light and feminine, but still has a strong impact visually. I know I'm sure that a lot of people uh, who are tuning in are, are also seeking kind of design advice. So, I mean, what tips do you have for working, working with color? Do you have an approach that you take or is it, does, is it something that is more innate and just comes natural to you? It does. It comes very, very natural to me. In fact, I don't know if I can do a room without any color in it, even though I have done that. Um, it, for me, my approach really is starting off with an inspiration piece. Like I said, it, in this case, it was the rug. And I usually try to find something that has multiple colors in it. So um, something with a strong pattern that has multiple colors. And then I just pull from there and I sprinkle this, those colors throughout the room. Um, in some cases, I'm adding more of that color, less of this color. So it really just starts with one piece that you can build an entire scheme from. Yeah, I think um, kind of a more philosophical question, I guess, would be um, what are some of your like never using color, I'm going to guess is one of them, but your never break design rules, the thing, the rules that you, I, I'm a big rules are meant to be broken person, but I, I have found that most designers have a few that they really stick with. So 
see I don't I mean I, I know the rules but I always break the rules honestly okay. um, yeah. there, there, there are certain things though that you know you, you scale has to be a big part of it balance you know proportion all those things obviously have to be considered but sometimes I will still go for something that's a little bit off the wall like for example the chandelier it, it's a huge piece and it may be overscaled for this room but it makes the statement that I wanted to make and it's quiet in terms of the coloring and the, and the finish. So, so that was probably a rule that's broken here, but yeah, I don't think, you know, the rule of scale and proportion and harmony should be broken. And when it comes to designing um, a dining space or a, a room that really people are going to use and utilize as opposed to something, you know, super formal, what, um, what is your approach to that in making your selections? Is it comfort? Is it, you know, being more inviting. I, I'm yeah, looking I, specifically like the chairs look from mm -hmm. the most chairs look so comfy. <laughs> yeah, I like for our dining rooms to be comfortable. I like when um, people after dinner, they're not just like, you know, trying to escape the room because it's so uncomfortable. I like for people to be able to sit and mingle and chat and have conversations after dinner. So chairs have to be comfortable. Um, I typically don't use a lot of wood chairs when I'm doing dining rooms. I, I usually go for upholster chairs. And I always wanna make sure that, you know, there's, you know, um, good lighting in the room as well. So yes, for me, it's comfort. Yeah, as someone who um, had what I thought was just a beautiful dining bench, I have learned from my yeah. errors. <laughs> I'll never, you need yeah. a, a cushion hard. and perhaps a back. <laughs> yeah, uh, so <laughs> uh, I'll kind of ask the same, I mean, the same question I asked Mikel is if there's anything that you're looking forward uh, to kind of being in the rear view mirror and it could either be related to design or kind of maybe take it the other way of something as we move to a more normal-ish 2021, anything that you're really looking forward to uh, in design and in the industry. Looking forward to leaving behind or? Either, you can do, you can be positive or you can say that you hate word <laughs> art, whatever. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I agree with the word art very much so. You know, I'm doing a church right now and we're doing some scripture verses on the walls. So forgive me, Mikhail. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to seeing people just kind of design for themselves and not what's trending. Um, yeah. I, I, that's, that's how the whole farmhouse thing came about and just stuck with everybody. You know, of course, it's easy living and it's very laid back and casual. And I think that's what resonated with people. But I don't think it represented people's actual aesthetic. They just did it because that's what's out there. That's what they could find. So I'm looking forward to people just kind of designing for themselves. And that's what I do when I sit down with my clients. I want to know how they live and the things that they love. And then they just leave everything else to me to figure out for them. But yes, design mm -hmm. for the way you live. I think that, um, that it's so important as we were kind of preparing to debut the print magazine, I made sure to prioritize that there would be it wouldn't all look the same, that every time you turn to a new story, you're seeing a new style. I, I've learned, I've been doing this for so long, people don't all like the same stuff. And, you know, you can think this is like the, the trendiest room and it just, no one likes it on Instagram, people aren't engaging with it. So it's so personal. I think it's, uh, it's wonderful that you connect with your clients in that way to make sure that it's something you know, it's their home. It's where they they are at the end of every day, <laughs> start and it. And if it's the last year, just twenty four hours a day, all the time. <laughs> but, uh, is there anything else you want to add about any of the pieces you chose, or any shameless plugs? Because this is well, this is just the, my favorite piece there is that mirror, which I, I love mirrors in dining rooms for some reason, and this one just felt more like a piece of art than a mirror. So that yeah. one resonated with me. Um, typically in my designs, you'll always find a piece of animal print. I, I didn't have one here, but that's uh, one of the things that, like Michaela, I'd run in and save my animal print pieces <laughs> um, in my own home. But um, but yes, yeah, so, so, so that mirror was a big, um, I, I love that mirror actually. And the mirror, it's uh, Global Views, right? Global Views, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is the first show. When I'm back at a market, Global Views, I will be there. It's <laughs> a great showroom. Right, well, let's see, continue moving through the home. Hello, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> great name, great to connect. Um, first, I, just as a fan of your work for so long, I'd love if you could tell everyone just a little bit about your career path because design wasn't your first rodeo no. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is my, I guess, 
I guess we'll say second, but kind of third career. Um, I originally, I was a nerd in school. I went to college for, a, I was a math and computer science major <laughs> and ended up with a business degree and, and t- like, but focused on, what was it? Information technology back then. That's, I don't even think they call it that anymore. Um, and then I went to law school and I practiced law for a few years. And after kind of getting burned out by one case, I was like, let me, I got free time. Let me go do this. And I took a class at Berkeley um, in drafting because, of course, I went to the nerdiest class yeah. and I loved it, like just loved it. And then I took another class and I took another class. And then I took a class that required me to draw and things that I didn't think I knew how to do. Um, and I excelled and really enjoyed them. So in two and a half years later, I was like, oh, well, maybe I should do this. And that's what happened. I ended up moving to L.A. and le- left the law behind and hung out my shingle my design shingle um, at that point. And so that's been, it actually is 10 years this year. Um, We're having like a, in the summer, we're celebrating 10 years. So it's amazing. Um, And I haven't looked back, you know, I I miss the law some days, but most days I do not. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And really quick, I wanted to make sure before we dive into the room, uh, you also have an amazing initiative, uh, a way of giving back to the community, especially in Oakland where you're based. So if you'd like, I'd love if you would uh, speak a little bit about that. Well, yes. Um, so we have a nonprofit called Joy Street Initiative, and essentially we uh, tr- um, transform uh, the the rooms of women's shelters, uh, transitional women's shelters, primarily in Oakland. Um, right now, we're working on kind of trying to fundraise and do an entire kitchen for um, this women's shelter that houses ten to twelve families at any given point, and it's been remarkable um the the experience to do it i you know i grew up in chicago i was raised by my grandmother and i feel like i've achieved what i've been achieved because other people helped me and so i've always felt that i needed to give back in whichever way i could and so this, now that i'm a uh, designer i felt like the easiest way or the best way to give back was to do something in this uh, manner and i um We give essentially from Joy Street Design, we give 10% of our profits to the nonprofit. And so that's what is used to fund all of the different makeovers we do. It's, uh, that's actually how I first uh, connected with you and learned a little bit about your design firm was through the initiative. And I think it's uh, such an impressive thing, but design can be so impactful for, you know, I always say that home is really more of a feeling and the power of a beautiful space can really, you know, just transform your life and I I guess that's my nerdy element is like the emotions so I'm glad that you're the smart one and then I'll be hyper emotional <laughs> no and you know honestly I feel like home is really important especially when you've been through trauma or homelessness and to be able to come into a room that was designed and thoughtfully designed and cared for and specifically for you means so much um, in a way that you just don't even understand it when you haven't been in that situation yeah. Well, speaking of ki- designing kitchens and the, the joy it can bring, let's talk about uh, this kitchen and the, the virtual show house. Yeah. So my, um, I did the kitchen. I'm always doing the kitchen. Anybody who follows me at all knows my love is deep, deep for kitchens and baths. Um, and so I was lucky to be able to do the kitchen for this room. You know, the, it, the way we start kitchens is that we always... I only do color, like that's what I want. I, I do, we actually have a hashtag, no white kitchens. Um, and so we were really struggling with kind of figuring out what we could do with this room. And so I found this great artwork um, from Left Bank that I thought had really fun colors. Um, and so we used that as our jumping off point and we decided to go with this deep green emerald um, cabinet. And that kind of really sets the tone for the entire kitchen. Um, And then as our, our, uh, most of our spaces, we we love a good, lots of black accents and wood to balance all the color we like to bring in typically. So that's what you see throughout. We have like the fun backsplash um, along with the gray curry and company lighting and um, other, what's five, Moe's actually, um, we have a couple of elements from there. And then we just kind of went to a lot of our favorite vendors, our interiors, the chair there, which is just one of my favorites, along with the forehands um, wood to bring in some of that balance. So this has been like, it was really fun to kind of take our 
overall philosophy about design in terms of bringing in color and and, and filling in, in in a way that you typically don't see, especially if we were just, as Veronica was just talking about the farmhouse and, and we just really have an aversion to that. <laughs> um, and we do everything in our power to convince our clients that they should also do something that's more meaningful and soulful to what they really want. Yeah, I, I'll butcher the exact quote you said, but in the article in um, the spring issue, there's a quote where you, you mentioned blue isn't really a color anyway. So that's always the first one that you. <laughs> that's, all, I mean, that's, that's the gateway drug. We say that's the gateway color, right? Yeah. We tell clients, you know, when they we show them blue, they're like, oh, well, you are already gate. Like you have color. And I was like, there's no color. This is blue. Blue is a neutral. Like, let's start with a different fun color. So it's, I love that our clients are really open to every once in a while we get a client that wants white kitchen or something like that. And I'm like, have you seen anything we've done? But, <laughs> but generally we are, you know, our clients trust us to find that balance and not do too, not make it kitschy and something you wouldn't be able to resell, but also make it feel like you and important and like you love it every time you walk in there. Because ultimately, like one of my biggest, I tell clients, like, don't wait till you're moving to redo your kitchen. That means you sat there with that ugly kitchen for 10 years, and now you're going to redo it for the next person to get the benefit. That makes zero sense. So we are very much about enjoying your space and really yeah. living in it, right? I mean, that's the point. We're supposed to, and we should all know that now for sure. It's a point to live in the spaces and love them. Because otherwise, you'll just be staring at them and always upset. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Joy Street Design, one of your your main principles is, well, will people be happy when they walk walk in the door? Yeah. Uh, will it spark joy? Will, will they feel joyful just in their everyday routines? And I think that's so important. Um, for your own home, what, what in your home makes you happy right now? You know, I believe, I mean, I love artwork um, in my home. I So we have a policy generally when most whenever we travel, which obviously hasn't been happening as much, that we pick up a piece of art. And it doesn't need to be expensive. It could be somebody in the park painting a canvas that we'll roll up and put in our backpack or whatever. But we have, when you walk through my house, there's all these little mementos that I have saved from these trips. And these, you know, we didn't have any money and we would buy things and they just remind me of like the life we've lived, but they're also colorful and soulful about the places we've been and what we've learned from those. So that's what I, when I walked in my house, that's, I think that's been the saving grace literally for this pandemic is that I was able to see these things and kind of think about where we got them from. And that's, a, that's something that I try to tell people all the time. Um, we've had, even had some that we bought and we've given, to, you know, not given, let's be real, sold to clients, <laughs> but it's things that we picked up and they it work perfectly in a room and they're able to say oh this is from Nicaragua and it's, it has some meaning other than something else yeah it, uh m my husband and I decided we were going to do the same thing on our last trip in the summer of 2019 or <laughs> so uh -huh. we'll pick it up the collection no I actually got my last piece I, it's so funny to think about it now but I got back from India on March 4th of 2020 and you, so you made it right up you had yeah, like one but I was worried we were gonna be like quarantine and now thinking about it, I was like how silly was it for me to go but but you know you what you don't know you don't know <laughs> yeah uh one other thing I wanted to touch on uh just before we move on is something that I think a lot of people a lot of readers anyway really connect with is um often you know in photo shoots or recently designed homes there aren't a lot of personal items but one thing that I've noticed is you always incorporate your clients personal items al along with props or things for styling so what are some of your styling tips when you know family photos or personal mementos but still kind of giving it that polished look that you're also known for yeah, I think that, you know, just to be completely honest, I am just not as skilled as Mikkel in styling, and we don't have that deft hand to bring in new stuff. So we love to just work with kind of, you know, some additional items, but elements that the client has so that when they turn around, they'll know what it is. And so because that's how I live my life, I try to like not impose too much additional stuff on my clients. So it's one of those things that if I probably if I knew better, I would do more. <laughs> um, but because of my lack of um, interest in bringing in things, sometimes it, it really allows us to forage 
for what our clients have and make that stuff feel special. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, it's definitely something I've noticed just with, you know, friends and family who read the magazine. They're like, these people have no families. <laughs> they do. The photos, <laughs> photos of their families are not in the photos of the magazine, yeah. but uh, yeah, me, having that personal touch, I think, is like very trash important. Cans, right? There's never any trash cans in any houses when we take pictures. <laughs> not one. <laughs> I, and usually no toilets either. So yeah. that's <laughs> more rare. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kelly. Thanks. Angelo, you are up with the living room. Hey, how are you? Hello, good. Well, first, uh, just like everyone else, you you get a nice moment to talk about yourself and kind of your design origin story of how how you began. Uh, I kind of like Mikel came into interior design sort of through the back door. Um, I was a fine art major and a theater minor in college, which was very upsetting to my family because they didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to do, and and we had immigrated from Europe to Chicago when I was about six years old. So like all immigrants, my family wanted me to be like, you know, a doctor or a lawyer or something that had would seem like a normal job. And, and I wanted to be creative, but I didn't know how I was gonna make a living painting. And um, a friend of mine said, you know, you have no money, but your apartment always looks really cool. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I just like find stuff on the side of the street and like take it back and cover it with like a, a, a dish towel that I found at a thrift store or whatever. And he's like, you can charge people for this. I'm like, you can? Because it was not even in my radar that this kind of job existed. So um, yeah, I started charging people. And in the beginning, this many years ago, I was charging so little. And to me, it was a lot of money but I was charging like nothing. And I had a client once say, you know, this is ridiculous, right? Like she was like, you have to charge people. Like, this is what you can charge them. I'm like, what? <laughs> and that kind of started my career. And um, somewhere along the lines, I think the fact that I was also a theater uh, minor helped in me starting a sort of a TV career in, in design and hosting. So that's when my worlds kind of merged. Yeah. So you maybe not um you know making a living with the fine art but you were able to blend the other passions to yeah. create a yeah. wonderful career uh and what is it that what is it that makes you happiest about design or tv or both <laughs> but uh, just about the work that you do what do you love most about it i love design because it's for me, it's instant transformation. I was the dorky kid who was constantly moving the furniture in my parents' apartment. Like they'd wake up and the living room was always rearranged. And you know, I remember at six years old, like dragging furniture around the house and my mom would try to stop me and my dad would be like, just let him do it. Because for some reason, every time he moves it around, this little tiny one bedroom apartment looks better. And I just, <laughs> and I love that transformational aspect of design you can get in there and physically change a space and sometimes within a couple of hours obviously in big projects over time but I think it's one of the things that that I'm addicted to is that instant change that you can do yeah I think uh it's we don't cover on Rue we don't cover a ton of like the before and afters usually it's a, more of the polished finished products but the the transformations always are it, it's just mind-blowing what can what can happen with, you know, either a huge renovation or even just paint and furniture and fabulous art. Um, so I think that's a, a great opportunity to kind of move into this room and talk about what your approach was. Was there, um, what was your vision? What were you hoping the room would feel like with your selections? I wanted to do something that is not normally the way that I design spaces for my clients. My spaces tend to be really, um, sort of lived in a little bit and I wanted to do something a little bit more polished and a little bit more glamorous and so the idea was to bring in pieces that had some rounded elements and some really luxurious fabrics so it would break up the boxiness of a room and I think that's the reason for um, a couple of the accent pieces like the chair which is here's the here's this shameless plug for my own personal collection <laughs> <laughs> and the cabinet which was again for my collection but the cabinet for me was like really fun because I designed it to be kind of, um, I don't want to say cartoonish, but kind of like over the top. It's got these big giant sort of faux diamond knobs and it's really lacquered and it feels like a 1930s black and white film to me. 
Um, and then mixing it with really great textures like the, the rug and the pillows. And, and the most important thing for me, for me, and I think for a lot of designers, is lighting, because you can have a beautiful room. And if it's not lit properly and, it, and you're not using the right finishes, everything just kind of falls flat. That it's it's so true. So in choosing, um, I'm looking at the, the console, it's the diamond uh, knobs, but otherwise you, everything else is mostly brass when it comes to um, the finishes. Was that intentional or do you like to mix it up or? No, I do like to mix it up. Strong... Yeah, usually in my in my everyday design life, I always tell people mix colors, mix textures, mix metals. I don't follow the rules at all. And I think partially because I think I come from the fine art world and you learn really quickly that the things that are most interesting on a canvas or in a sculpture are the things that aren't following any kind of guideline. And that's how I look at a room. And so this was a complete 180 for me. I wanted to sort of kind of put myself in a box in a way and be like, okay, so if I'm going for a very specific look, which was, you know, 1930s Hollywood glam, what would that look like for me in, in, in 2021? And so I kind of kept it very simple in a way, um, but really kind of up the ante a little bit with uh, the textures in the rug and the artwork and uh, and some of the accessories. I think uh, just from my my perspective of what I'm seeing happening, I think we'll we'll start to see spaces that have up the ante a little bit. I think we're all maybe after the last year a little bored or <laughs> don't feel feel like yeah. we need that extra. We need more. We need more color, more everything, more comfort. And so I, I can really see that conveyed in this space. Um, awesome. And one of the questions is, of course, virtual show houses come with very generous budgets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's very virtual. Um, but if you were designing this room for a client, is there are there any adjustments you would make for more real world, or would is this what you would design? Well, here's the thing that's so interesting about that is uh, my product line is sort of real world pricing. The 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 action chair is approximately three hundred dollars retail. The, the buffet cabinet is around three three fifty. The coffee table is around two hundred. So I believe in real world pricing, <laughs> and part of that is I think sort of inbred in, in me because of the way we grew up and coming to this country with nothing. You you really start to realize that everything you bring in your home has to have a value. And if you're going to spend and splurge on that one big piece, whether it's a really great giant comfy sofa or a big accent piece like Mikkel's gorgeous buffet, um, you have to make it in a judicious way that is like, it's gonna be a showpiece and it's gonna be something that I'm really gonna love and use. I can't just kind of really nearly fill the room with that kind of price point. Right, yeah. I think that is, uh, uh, I think that I'm glad I asked you that question with <laughs> with the real world pricing because, of course, uh, so many of us admire these super high end, uh, you know, upscale rooms. But then a lot a lot of folks, even uh, a lot of our readers specifically, we are dealing with real world prices and right. you know being being mindful of that. Um, and one final question for you as well: anything you're excited to see go away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to echo a couple things that the other side is that trends. I Nothing irks me more than walking into a room that's just filled with trends. I'm, I, I, I feel like we've lost the person that lives there. Like, where are you? And, and I think that that comes from an insecurity sometimes of like not knowing what to do. So you're just going to what's available. So I would be very happy to, to, to watch people really reclaim what their own personal style is and design and shop accordingly. So we're seeing a mix of fabrics and a mix of styles and, and also using some of their own stuff with new things. I, I love that. Yeah, I love, I'm, I'm really glad um, to hear you say that because that's kind of one of my goals as we continue to grow. The print magazine is get, kind of bidding farewell to trends and like, it's just the same thing. And it's, yes. that I'm, I'm no one to tell someone exactly what they should have in their home, but I want to give them the tool to find what they love and find what they identify yes. with. So Yes. Seeing, seeing design, um, I think there's something for everyone. And I, w yeah, it's, 
I could ramble and then I would just hijack <laughs> the whole talk. <laughs> Me too. It's literally my favorite topic to talk about because I, every time I have a client who says like, you know, oh, what do you think I should do? And, and they're showing me either Pinterest pages or things that they've tore out of magazines because they feel that that's what they should do. And when you yeah. dig a little deeper, they actually aren't like, well, I don't think I love it, but I'm, I'm supposed to love it or everyone tells me mm -hmm. it's really cool. So yeah, I'm with you on that. I, yeah, I think finding... Um finding out what really connects with people and what they love about it. And to go back uh, to kind of Kelly's concept of what will make them happy in their homes, what will make 100%. them feel joy every day. So, yeah. um, well, a space that has brought me joy every day is the home office, which I think is our last room. <laughs> Not really. I've been in this office for a <laughs> hundred years. But <laughs> Linda, I'm excited. I wish that um, my home office looked like this. Um, before we talk about it, I'd love to know kind of your backstory and when you first discovered your love of design and lighting design as well, specifically. Wow. Uh, well, okay. So as a teen, I loved interior design, um, but I just would dabble with it in my bedroom. And then I was also a competitive and professional ice skater. And so that's what I did in my youth up until my early 20s before college, and I fell in love with theatrical lighting. And so I used to stand backstage and watch the colored lights dance around the skaters and knew then instantly that I fell in love with lighting. But um, at the time there really wasn't lighting design colleges. And so I went to uh, University of Long Beach and got a formal training in um, environmental design and architecture. Uh, and my thesis was in lighting design. And so then I went to work for architectural lighting firms the first three years out of college and was jealous of the interior designers that I was working for. So early on in my career, I transitioned back into commercial interior design and worked in office space planning and design and then back and forth into architectural lighting and then got picked up by Disney Imagineering to design light fixtures for their theme parks because I was the liaison between uh, architectural lighting and interior design. <laughs> and then I went back into uh, interior design after uh, Disney and I fell in love with um, the idea of coming up with wireless lighting because I had design designed so much custom lighting there and so uh, that's when I uh, had the gumption to uh, engineer these uh, wireless lamps. But also I love the idea of the deeper meaning of design. I learned storytelling and I love the idea of understanding what we're putting in the spaces because everything's always about a personal story. Yeah, well that, um, I love knowing that kind of your first connection was the more theatrical lighting of like the drama and the personality that that could bring to a performance or uh you know the skating rink but then seeing it kind of translate into what your interior design and your lighting design style is is super inspiring uh, uh, I'd love to talk about this this room what was I'm going to guess that lighting was likely the first product choice that you made or was there another item that kind of kicked it off for you well, I um, had this art piece, um, which is the main piece in there. It's called Cloud Girl by Monica Tailcob, and it's at Four Hands. And I felt that it really represented what we all went through during the pandemic. Um, it's about the fear of not knowing where we're going next and kind of being in a fog. And so I felt that that would be an anchor piece for the room. And I paired that with uh, the solid colors, this periwinkle that I identified with the dawn of the day 
because that gives us another point of reference as you know we can push through this and then the soft blushes actually complement skin tones and i thought that would be a great complement as well as contrast in the space so it was really the art piece that did it but the lighting i actually was thoughtful about that too because i wanted to be asymmetrical with the lighting and create task lighting which was that one piece from noir as well as the uh, visual comfort piece on the far left. And then I just kind of created a backdrop of insets that would highlight that art that showed the uh, asymmetry around the central piece of the art. I think that is such a, it's, it's so thoughtful, especially given the last year. I mean, down to complimenting skin tone as we all have been on video chat. <laughs> so, so much, we, who would have thought we ever would have had to put any thought into that at all. Um, but I think it, it really does tell a nice story and the art is so emotive and so um, immediately conveys what I think we've all felt of whether it's the head just feeling foggy in general or the fear of not being able to know what could go wrong next, I think is really what but last year has felt yeah, like. Yeah, I thought the, the piece of art was, um, uh, pretty much right on um, with the young uh, girl with the buttoned up collar and trying to get through this. And so I was like, you know, I'm gonna design around the art. <laughs> and that's what I do sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the desk is from Noir, is that right? Yeah, what I wanted to do is create um, influences from different parts of the world. Um, this desk, I know Noir, it's inspired. Um, I've seen these pieces, um, Portuguese spindles uh, that have been on Portuguese beds. And I thought that was a great way to insert a worldly um, accents as well as the uh, global views chairs with the rattan and the black as contrast to the spaces as well. So, and then I like the chair um, that supports your neck. And so I feel it's really important to have some form of ergonomic uh, chairs now. I don't know of any of the other designers, but it's been all about how comfortable the chairs are in your space, right? And so, that was something that I didn't really want to uh, just get a decorative chair about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that, I mean, I worked on, I believe, my dining table chair for the first three months and now something, now I'm in a much more ergonomic seat, I think. Right. Um, and in your own home, are there any must-haves when you're designing for yourself versus designing for a client or um, a show house like this? <laughs> and outside. <laughs> okay, repeat that, sorry. Uh, designing for yourself, is there any different approach or any must-haves that you like in your own space that you maybe don't consider when designing for a show house or for clients? Or maybe consider even more just because it's such a priority to you? Well, I think dimmers are extremely important. And so um, I'm all about the quality of light. I'm all about the depth and perception of light and that shadow is just as important as the impact of light in a space. And so I um, love dimmers. And then I also love nostalgia. I love mixing nostalgia with modern sensibility. And so I collect vintage lamps table lamps and I mix them with uh, custom shades. I like to personalize them. And then I also have um, sets of vintage uh, drinking glasses and I collect those as well. So I think it has, it brings a lot of meaning into spaces and I promote that with my clients as well. And that actually helps create these unique environments that you wouldn't normally be able to purchase. Yeah, you and I have that in common with uh, vintage drinking glasses. It made the at-home happy hours feel just a little fancier. Oh my God. <laughs> I collect vintage coats too. <laughs> and vintage handbags. <laughs> oh, that those that you'll be ready to take them take them out again soon. <laughs> I looked at my purses and thought. Soon. We'll go places soon. I know. I know. I haven't worn heels forever. I just started wearing heels again. I was like, oh my God, this is how it feels to walk. Yeah. yeah if, anyone, if anyone sees me at uh, 
the next I won't be at market this weekend, but the next time that we're all in, together in person, I will be in flats. I no longer know how to wear heels. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go through I, and just see if there were any questions. And Kim, maybe you could chime in if any came through um, on Facebook. Let's see. If everyone can read the chats, there are a lot of nice comments here. One for Angelo. Um, my question for you is your greatest technique for always bringing brilliant coordination, life, and color to everything you do without relying on the cliche of eclecticism. Uh, you coordinate with individualism and inspiration. What is your greatest resource for inspiration and an absolute design never? Wow. Okay. That's, that's so, so nice. That's so sweet. Uh, for me, I think it's not I think I know it's based in the fine art background. It's not such a boring, it's such a boring answer. But I spent so many years studying art theory and color theory and, and, and all that stuff that you do in, in, in art school that I now it's such second nature that I don't even think about it. I can walk into a room or walk somewhere instantly pull something together based on all the stuff that's in my head. <laughs> so I highly recommend, I, I get this question a lot from people saying, you know, what do you think I should study? What I, I want to get into interior design. And I say, it's great to study interior design and study a bunch of things that are not interior design, like fine art and like, you know, sculpture and figure drawing and all these things that will allow you to think outside of the way that I think sometimes interior design can limit you and it'll make you a much richer designer of it just that it will bring in all these other layers yeah uh there's a question for um everyone on the panel what in your journey has offered the greatest opportunity and obstacle everyone's looking around at each other <laughs> I, I know probably for others too but I think traveling really widens perspective and allows us to think past trends and so it's just really important to get out there and see how other people live because not everything is defined by what you have but it's how you use it totally agree with that I think the um, greatest opportunity is, is seeing how other people live and then you can incorporate that into what you what you do. I will say, I want to think, I feel like it's interesting, the greatest obstacle I think is the proliferation of sameness in everything that's out there generally. And I will say in the last year with everything that's going on, that's gone on, that that's changing in a lot of different ways, right? And you're seeing different things out there. You're seeing different diversity in thought, diversity in color, diversity in race and all the other, you know, in every way. And it's really refreshing. So we're not only seeing one type of home or, you know, the only the Netflix shows that have one type of thing happening. It's like this entire ecosystem of people who have been around for years, right. decades, um, right? And now they're finally, the, the kind of world is opening up to recognizing that that's talent in a different way. So I'm loving Love that. It. So I would consider it an obstacle, but I feel like right now it's a great opportunity for everyone, um, honestly. I'm on mute temporarily because boy, I hate to say that it's trash day on my street and they are picking up the recycling right now. <laughs> <laughs> but Real any, uh, Kelly, though, I think that that's so important. I think one of my greatest honors from an editorial standpoint is being able to tell different stories. I think different perspectives, different, whether it's the people who live there or the people who are designing, that is the, the sameness is so boring. And, you know, your, your mind starts to numb a little bit when it's like, how many times will I see this exact chair in the same placement and style it's so refreshing and joyful to see what the real world actually looks like and is represented and like you know it's also for us right we get inspiration from each other as well right so it's so nice to be able to see like I love my feed on Instagram now it's just so interesting and I'm like oh I'm saving that oh I'm saving like this is you know this is a very iterative iterative process and so it's so nice to see more for sure uh Mikkel, I wanted to chime in from what you included on um, the chat, if you wanted to talk a little bit about the greatest opportunity that you had received. Yeah, you know, I think I answered the question in a, in a different manner. Um, I took it from a professional, like, perspective, and I said the biggest benefit or career-wise I think I've had is just 
participating in designer show houses, those like changed my life. Um, they're scary, um, but it's like the gift that keeps giving. Um, I did my first designer show house back in 2016. And I got one client off of that who's referred me to seven other clients. And so I'm always like anyone looking to like break into designing, if you can, whatever neighborhood you're in, I, I always encourage people um, to jump on that just because people who typically come through those show houses have bigger budgets to work with. And for me, that was just the biggest um, game changer in my life. But I would also say, um, just being open to just the word yes, because you never know when that next opportunity is around the corner. Um, I'll give an example of like Kim Porter, who um, put this together. Kim had me speak on a panel. And after I got finished, I was exhausted. I really just wanted to go back to my hotel room. I didn't want to do anything else. And I just happened, I was with my mom, she came with me and she's collecting free bags from every vendor at market. And I'm like, lady, this is the last store or showroom we're going in and this is it. While I was in that showroom, I commented on a piece of art and I was just like, I really wish they hadn't put this medallion on and that's peace. And this woman stops me and she's like, what did you just say? And I'm like, oh shoot. And it ended up being the vice president of the brand. And she said, we're looking to partner with a designer. And that's how I got my furniture collection. So I always say, you never know when that next opportunity is around the corner. So don't be afraid to say yes. I think we all uh, have said yes to Kim Porter once or twice. <laughs> and it has, <laughs> right? has resulted in... Yeah, so many great opportunities or connections or conversations. Mm -hmm. Hello, Kim. <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure to have all of you involved. And it's always an honor as well. Um, not only do I learn a ton, but all of the attendees and buyers at market do. And our exhibitors, um, as you all have shown, their products are making your designs. And you are choosing by your taste and you can find all of that, you know, at Vegas Market, at High Point, Atlanta, all the different places. But really, it comes down to what you all have discussed is your individual perspective. And that's what we look forward to partnering with um, for you guys and to bring that to the forefront and show it. And yeah. Just congratulations. This has been a really wonderful display of artwork by each of you. Kim, I believe we have one more question. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, one other question is, how do you design for both him and her spaces, um, for Angelo and Chef Andre? Oh, uh you have a lot of conversations with your clients. <laughs> I am very big, and I'm sure the other designers are as well, to just get past all the inspiration boards and get to the root of who these people are that live in the space. Because at the end of the day, I've never met a client when they say to me, oh, I really don't have style, or I'm going to let my partner do all that because that's not my thing. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I am dragging you into this. <laughs> and I'm going to dig to find out because I believe everyone's got style. But I think you learn really early on that if your aesthetic doesn't fit what everyone thinks is happening, then it gets shushed. And so I think people get very insecure about their personal style. So I'm a big fan of getting in there and figuring out what that is and then bringing it out. And if you can do that for both people that live in a space, then you can really create some incredible homes. And, and my favorite thing at the end of a project is for my clients to throw a party and have their friends come over and say, oh my God, you guys have great style, not who designed your house. It's, it's not my imprint, it's their imprint. Parties. I'm all, I'm all <laughs> about happy wife, happy life. Shut up and, <laughs> and do what your wife says or else like we're not gonna get out of this meeting. So I'm always like, whatever the wife says, that's what we're going with. <laughs> so, it's, so it's funny because I agree, but I try to determine who's in charge because sometimes it's not the wife. Like in my That's house, true. my husband, who cares what he has to say, right? But <laughs> in some houses, it's actually, you know, the husband or if it's too big, like, you know, it's not, it's, but you decide who's in charge 
and we let them kind of lead and try to throw a bone to the other people every once in a while. <laughs> I having I think I've probably written hundreds of home tours. Maybe that it sounds like too many. That sounds like too many things to have written, but <laughs> certainly, and it always. It's never, I don't think I've written one where it's like, the couple was really in sync. It's always like, well, clearly. Yeah, they're never in sync. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any questions uh, on either the Zoom or Facebook that we should get to? Not that I saw. Um, I think we covered all of the questions that came in. Anything else that any of uh, the designers want to just get off their chest in a public platform? <laughs> no. no. Your designer. Listen to your designer. I knew Veronica would have one. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yes. Um, yeah, I find that if the client hires you and then they're too overly involved in the process, it makes the process not go the best, and you don't end up with the best results. So my two cents here is trust your designer. Oh, I have one. If you are an interior designer on this platform and you're looking to whip your business into shape, you have to check out Veronica's uh, plans that she has because Veronica, you don't know this, but I've used some of your plans. So thank you. They will help get your life in order. So <laughs> she will tell you, she will tell you everything from like, just go on her site. She has like lots of programs just to help you whip your business in shape. So thank you, Veronica, for helping Mikhail Welch designs. Like, oh, thank you. Love that. Love that. <laughs> Well, I think that is um, a very positive and communal way to end it. Thank you, Mikkel. <laughs> you knew Veronica wasn't going to do her own shameless plug, so you just <laughs> dove in. And made sure. Well, Kim, I'll let you um, wrap up any housekeeping or announcements of any sort, but uh, just for me, thank you. It was so nice talking to everyone in real life, face-to-face -face, so anyway. And thank you. Well, it was definitely a pleasure having you all join us. And um, I know that everyone who is watching and who will be watching, as this will be, you know, on our YouTube channel as well, um, appreciates your just honest opinions and your genuineness and um, your creativity as well, because you're designing new things for all of us to kind of incorporate and hopefully this also blesses you with more additional design work going forward. Um, for those who are joining us, this is the EU accredited, like I mentioned previously, I'll send that information to you. Um, also go to our website at lasvegasmarket.com and you can see all of their designs along with um, some other questions that we ask them and their true opinions um, in written form along with links to all of the exhibitors where you can go straight and see the product from that exhibitor. And it will be found on our website under Explore Market and Virtual Show House. And this was the house that visionaries built and you definitely all are visionaries for today and tomorrow. So I just wanna thank you from International Market Centers and Las Vegas Market. Have a wonderful thank afternoon, you. everyone, and thank you again. This was Thanks, awesome. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you.